on the internet.com in the last few days few hours actually 24 hours i should say there is a talk of fear uh, fear mongering and um, a risk of the third world war and it comes from uh, biden the united states president or outgoing president actually uh, authorizing ukraine to use some long-range missiles that have been supplied against russia i'm not a, a geopolitical expert i am not a war expert so i would take that at a face value and the assumption i'm making and i think that's what it is the ukraine war is being supported by the united states uh, either both actually financially and in terms of equipment but also probably in terms of um, expertise and training so the russians know they are at a sort of a proxy war with the united states we kind of know that although the media doesn't want to say that but uh, that's not new the war between the united states and the russia or what was the soviet union has been going on for i don't know 70 years plus but I just wanted to quench that fear. This fear has been ongoing for as long as I can remember. I was born in 1975, and during the 90s, I would say probably it is as well, there was always a fear that the United States and the, the, and the Russia will, will kind of enter into some sort of confrontation with regard to their nuclear um, 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 ammunition or nuclear arsenal. And uh, at the moment, apparently, Russia has kind of decided to downgrade the requirement for deploying their nuclear. Again, I have got no clue what it is, how they work. But uh, from a, a, a geopolitical point of view, I do think um, Ukraine has got advisors outside of the United States and outside of Ukraine. And uh, particularly in Europe, countries like Germany, etc., and uh, probably nearby, um, the, um, Georgia, the um, uh, Poland or, or Tricia, whatever. I think there are countries near Germany or in Europe who are advising uh, Vladimir Volodymyr Zelensky. And the last thing I think they would want is a full-blown war in their region, in Europe in particular. I understand Americans being so geographically away from the United States, from the Russia, aren't probably very concerned uh, with the escalation. Although the majority of Americans, I think, both on the right and the left, aren't really happy with this war mongering the politicians that are spending trillions and trillions of their dollars onto a world that is pretty remote from their, their, their daily life. Um, it's not like they are helping a veteran or a homeless person or anything like that. So I do assume that to some extent there won't be that sort of war that the Europeans will advise Zelensky that there's no point to escalate unless he's 100% sure he's going to annihilate Russia in the next two months which probably is a very long stretch. And I'm saying the next two months because in my opinion, I think Trump, when it comes to power in two months time or less, he is going to try to broker peace between Ukraine and Russia. I was having a discussion with a colleague last yesterday and he thought that that's not gonna happen, uh, that the nobody wanna give in, etc., etc., or that he's gonna stop supporting Ukraine a, I don't see any problem with that. The United States saying, I don't want to get involved with the regional conflicts. It's not a bad thing. They could always get some sort of agreement. Uh, many countries have got a border problems. Russia, I mean, China, in the China Sea or South China Sea has got issues with the Philippines and other countries. The, in Africa, we've got some border problems as well. I think the solution is not just to go and support one part against the other, but to try to broker some sort of peace. So Zelensky, knowing that Trump won't be supplying as much um, uh, support as uh, Joe Biden's administration, 
will probably think twice before he escalates. That's my opinion. And uh, I don't know what the solution will be, but I think in the end they are going to sit on the table of negotiation and decide where to cut the, the border. See, the border is becoming, has become messy by now. There are territories that are now independent, want to join Russia. That's going to be a big thing for debate because A, Ukraine would want to keep those territories, but B, Russia claimed those territories are Russians and the people are mixed there. Probably some tribes would want to keep being Russians. Others would want to join the Western bloc, Ukraine and, and, the, and the EU in the future. But something has to has to give. Something has to. They have to sit down and, and negotiate. That's that's not uh, a far fetched idea, and that's going to happen in the end. But if they start to escalate now, they are reducing the chances of a peace agreement. So the best way I would suppose in this period of transition for the United States, because I would think that war is entirely supported by the United States, if they were to drop support, Ukraine won't fall. Because I don't think Russia has got an intention to go all the way to Kiev. I think they are trying to, they, there's a territory they want, but there are also demands they are making regarding Ukraine the, the, joining the NATO and they were to, to draw a line. So I think Ukraine will be more willing to negotiate than they are at the moment. And for Russia, I also do believe that Trump being a sort of a non BS guy he is, he's going to tell Russia, look, you, we need to stop this. Uh, we're going to give you some, but you have to give some as well. That's what negotiations are about. So I do believe that's going to happen, but I do hope they're not going to escalate. I'm not really scared of a nuclear deployment anytime soon. Uh, I think uh, Ukraine is trying to sort of gain some momentum so that when uh, Trump called for negotiation, they probably have got a bit of a chunk of the uh, territory to negotiate or something or an upper hand. I'm not entirely sure why Ukraine would want to escalate, knowing that in two months' time they won't have as much support as they have enjoyed in the last two years, I. Uh, which is where I think, like, I don't take people for stupid. I don't think everyone is malicious. I think the German Chancellor, uh, in particular, has got a, a big say in the European conflict being to cross Russia and historically having had confronted Russia in the past. And having a big say in the in the European Union, I think he's going to be the one saying, please, let's not escalate at this point in time. Let's wait for the new government or the new administration to give them a chance. And hopefully there will be less warmongering than the liberals are at the moment. So that's my take on Russia and the Ukraine. I do hope they will definitely settle uh, their conflict um, to me, Ukraine and the Russia, they are all the same, to be honest. I used to meet people from Ukraine, and I thought they were Russians, and I thought even they speak Russian. Only recently with this conflict, I get to understand they are two different uh, nations. Well, I knew they were two different nations, but they are all part of the old Soviet Union, and they uh, should probably work together to, to safeguard their sovereignty and their culture. And now I think the um, I'm not supporting anyone in that conflict. I've learned to just choose my battles. Um, not that I'm, I have got any influence, but they just to keep myself sane and have a night, a good sleep at night. I choose to not take part into any of those in, online and uh, in fightings, online in fightings uh, regarding things where I've got zero control and where there is nothing at stake. Um, for for me at least but i do hope they will settle their their difference and um, live in peace again with the, each other the eastern part of ukraine will definitely have to be sort of negotiated uh, where the borders are traced and uh, and uh, eventually ukraine and the nato have to come with some sort of um, agreement with the Russia to make sure that Russia doesn't feel kind of threatened and dominated by the NATO at their borders. That's about all. Cheers.